Hey, what is up, guys? And welcome to 30 Minute Websites, the show where I build out an entire online store in 30 minutes, and each video is dedicated to a different product. So this uh, this uh, episode is going to be dedicated all towards beer. Uh, so if you run a brewery, whether you retail other people's beers, um, this is going to be perfect. There are going to be some licensing issues, so you will have to look at, at the, what the licensing is, uh, restrictions may be for your state and your country. Um, but yeah, just consult your lawyer about that and see what you may need to do or change to what we're going to be doing today to make sure it's legally compliant. So uh, how it works is we've got 30 minutes and I have a fresh installation of WordPress. So WordPress is a free open source content management system that lets you build online stores without having to do any coding whatsoever. Um, so basically all you'll need is a host. So what a host is, it's basically a company that has a bunch of servers that store your website and make it accessible to the internet. Um, so yeah, you just need to go, go to a host, uh, create an account. Um, most hosts will have like a really streamlined process that lets you install WordPress onto their servers. Um, but if you are having any issues at all, just contact support. Every time I've, every host I've ever been with, um, generally the hosts, are, the support is really good. And they're always really friendly and really helpful to get you started with your WordPress website. And because WordPress is the most con popular content management system out there, they're usually re it's usually really simple to install these days. And most support teams will be able to help you get started really, really quickly. So we'll need WordPress. Um, WordPress by itself doesn't actually have e-commerce functionality. So what WordPress is, is uh, WordPress is very basic and you add things called plugins that increase its functionality. So we're going to add a plugin called WooCommerce. So WooCommerce is made by the same company that owns WordPress, and it's just going to let us build an online store, be able to accept payments, and uh, do all that fun stuff. Um, so we'll need WordNet WooCommerce. Um, we'll need a theme. So how WordPress works is that you have a bunch of different themes that let you structure the appearance of how your website will look. So there's a theme that WooCommerce built called Storefront, it's also free to use. All this is free to use. The only thing so far that you have to pay for is your host. So we're going to be using Storefront. It lets you build really nice uh, looking online stores really quickly without having to do any coding whatsoever. So that's what we'll be using today. So we'll be using WordPress, WooCommerce, and Storefront. So you'll need all three of those, and I'll show you basically everything as we go. All you need to do so far to this point, to the point where we are now, all you need is a host with WordPress, um, you need a bunch of images, so whatever your product images are. So we'll be doing beer. We're also having things like um, different merch, different things like that, because that's always really popular with breweries is having like different merch. Um, what else do we need? Uh, I would personally pair this website with something like ClickFunnels. So ClickFunnels is a sales funnel, um, sorry, sales funnels uh, software that lets you build out sales funnels that guide your customers through a series of upsells and what you typically see compared to an online store. So sales funnels compared to online stores are typically higher converting. So the more people who visit the sales funnel will convert into customers. And you'll also see a higher average cart value of everybody who goes through. So on sales funnels are really good for new customers. So when you're introducing them to your brand, they typically will guide your customers through a, a set series of upsells that you've created um, that uh, that really and, then, and that's what increases the average cart value because it's kind of what you often see with uh, online stores is people can get, get confused they don't know where to go where to look where on a sales funnel you're kind of telling them okay this is what you should have with this this is what you should have with that and you can upsell them um specific products where an online store is much better for existing customers who know what they want they know what they're looking for they might want to combine um different products into the shopping cart and then you can charge them one set shipping fee um, usually it's super streamlined like that. So that's how I would use it. Uh, you could use the sales funnels for stuff like limited releases. Um, a lot of breweries like doing things like limited releases. Um, so having like a limited release and then you could upsell them different um, merch. Maybe you could have like uh, merch that was specific to that limited release. And that's always really cool. Um, you could do things like mix packs. So that's a great way to bring new customers in is with mix packs that, um, you know, maybe you have like a mix six pack. Maybe you could upsell them to a mixed carton or, you know, maybe a T-shirt or different kind of merch and different things like that. And that's how you can increase the average car value of each customer that comes to the store. And so my current offer is if you go and purchase ClickFunnels through my link, so I get an affiliate commission. So if you go to okryan.blog slash go, purchase it through my link um, as my way of saying thank you. What I'll do is I'll host your online store. So the online store we're about to build now, I'll host it for you for free. I'll build you your online store for free, saving you thousands.
and uh, also install your Facebook retargeting pixel. So what your Facebook pixel does, it basically lets you create ads that target Facebook users depending on actions taken on your website. So maybe they visited your website but didn't actually commit to purchasing. You can then create an ad that targets those people based on those actions or maybe they purchased and you want to upsell them more products because one of the best, the highest converting people that you'll find are existing customers. They're people who have already bought for you and already more likely to buy from you again. So that's some really cool things that we can do. So that's something I would recommend. So if you go to okryan.blog slash go, uh, links should be in the description. You, should, you can find out more information about how to claim your free prize when you purchase ClickFunnels. So basically that means you've got two options. You can go, you can go get ClickFunnels, try and figure out how to set up a sales funnel yourself. You can go purchase your host, try and install WordPress. You know, you can either spend thousands on a developer building your website or just spend hundreds of hours on YouTube trying to figure out how to build your own online store, then figure out how to install your Facebook targeting pixel or pay one set fee get me to do the whole lot for you. Um, so yeah, go to okryan.blog slash go for more information. So we have uh, e.gg timer, 30 minutes. So this is going to count down. You're going to see a little bit of a countdown timer that take, takes down as we go. So, uh, oh, last thing, because I haven't written any sales copy for any of the products that I'll be writing today, I have a bunch of filler text. So this is basically just going to go in the place of the sales copy. So it's going to give you an understanding of how the final product will look. Um, but of course, you would just replace the sales copy uh, with your own sales copy as we go. Um, all right, so our 30 minutes starting. Now, so first thing we've always got to do is log into the back end of our WordPress website, so click this dashboard. So when we've got to use the uh, logins that we created when we first installed WordPress onto our website. So uh, to, add, to access this page as well, just go to your domain and then go slash wp-admin. Um, you should be able to see it, that the wp-admin takes us to the back end. It still takes us to the back end. First thing I always like to do <coughs> sorry, is go to the permalink. So I like to change the permalink structure of my website. So WordPress by default doesn't give you the best permalink structure. So permalinks are the individual URLs for each page. Um, so I changed it from custom structure to post name. Um, otherwise it just gets, you get these really messy URLs. Uh, then I'm going to add two plugins. First plugin is going to call this is called, first plugin I'm going to add is called homepage control. So homepage control, uh, gives us a little bit more, um, a little bit more customizability to our homepage <clears throat> that we use with storefront. So homepage control, it's called by Woo themes free to use. So install now. And then activate. And then we're going to add a second plugin, which is called WooCommerce. So WooCommerce, we talked about earlier, is what's going to give our WordPress website e-commerce functionality. So we've installed WooCommerce. We're going to add new. So we're going to call WooCommerce. So WooCommerce was built by WordPress or by or both to so both WordPress and WooCommerce. Both companies are both owned by a company called Automatic. So they're both sisters, I guess install now and then activate. So WooCommerce takes a little bit of time to activate. <coughs> uh, yeah, it just takes a little bit of time to activate and then it'll bring us through, should bring us through a startup wizard. So the startup wizard basically gives 90% of what's needed to set up, uh, to configure our online store. So it's just installing and activating now. It takes a little bit of time. So it's going to ask us things like store location, um, what payment process are we going to be using, uh, shipping rules, and then just a bunch of different things like that. As far as payment processes go, there's a bunch of different options available. There's um, most payment processes will charge a very similar rate. So just put your store, your store location or your brewery location in here. Example, street... Brisbane, oh sorry, Example Street, Brisbane. So most payment processes charge the pretty much the same amount. Um, they're all very similar to each other. Um, so what I wouldn't, I wouldn't go choosing a payment processor versus um, well, what's the cheapest. You're basically yeah, nickel and diming, and it's. I mean, they're going to charge very similar amounts anyway. What I, I, what I would look for is a payment processor that um, the features and benefits of each payment processor. So I'm just using PayPal. PayPal is probably the easiest to set up. That may not mean it's the best for you, but it is the easiest. So if you're looking to start an online store today, 
PayPal is fine, but I would recommend looking to other payment processes. Um, so back to payment. Yeah. So the features and benefits. So let's say, so PayPal, the features of PayPal are that it is a worldwide renowned brand. Um, so everybody knows of it and everybody knows the fact that if something was to go wrong, um, and if they were to put the payments through and they didn't get the products, they didn't receive it, they can always go to PayPal directly and request a refund and they can get it something like do something like that. That's where the benefits of PayPal is that it's just a known payment processor. Um, a lot of people do then note that because they are so refund heavy that a lot of store owners do note that they'll send out the products and then the person will just request to refund anyway. That can be frustrating. Um, there's also Stripe. Stripe is very similar to PayPal, but PayPal is, but it doesn't quite have the worldwide brand recognition that PayPal has. Um, so it doesn't quite have the same trust that PayPal does. So if you have like a store that, you know, maybe it's brand new, um, something like PayPal might be good because it just does have, a, have that little bit of trust factor. One of the big things that you will need is to have trust. Trust is huge in online stores and e-commerce. And I think that's something that people a lot forget. They'll throw out these terrible looking websites and they wonder why they're not getting sales. It's like, cause it's nobody trusts you. <laughs> It still looks terrible. They got to put their credit card information in your website, and you'd not put any effort into making it look good. Um, I mean, it doesn't have to look amazing, but it has to look decent. All right, so I'm just gonna bulk upload all my images now, um, so I can get started on other things. Because normally, what I'd do is just do it step by step, like one product. I just upload them as I need them. But because I've only got 30 minutes to build an entire online store, I'm just going to up a little all in one go. Uh, and now I'm going to go and configure the shipping rules. So I like to, I don't like to do shipping on the actual starter wizard. I find it very restrictive. I like to set up to shipping within the settings. Um, but you've also got things like square. So if you have a, uh, an online store that, um, so let's say, um, you have you use square in your bricks and mortar store, you can sync up, you can sync your square payment processor with your online store. So you can have one place to manage your entire inventory. So it just makes inventory management so much more simpler. Because if you run a successful bricks and mortar brewery where you sell a lot of your products to breweries and you have a big online store presence, um, what you might find is that you might have in issues with inventory. So especially for things like limited releases or, um, Let's say you've only got, you know, X amount of cards to sell of your beer. Oh, I need to take off plugins. Sorry. Um, you have only have a certain amount of beer to sell and you oversell it. There could be a month before you can make a new batch kind of thing, or it could be, you know, a couple of weeks before you have a new batch uh, where people have bought your already pre-bought your product, but because you don't have an inventory management system in place, you can just throw the entire system out of whack. Uh, install plugins. Sorry. Um, You've also got things that like authorize. Authorize is really good for um, so authorize is really good for working with oh, what do you call them? Sorry, I'm trying to do two things. Was um, is really good for merchant accounts. So if you have a merchant account with your bank, uh, authorize is really good for pairing with merchant accounts, and they charge a really low rate. Um, they do, but then it does have a monthly fee. So you do need to get some kind of uh, sales volume in because you if you're doing not really much in the way of sales, you can end up spending a lot more because you have that monthly fee of some usually like I can't remember how much it's fifty bucks or something like that. Uh, but yeah, that that is something to know with authorizers. They charge a monthly fee and the plug there's a paid to be able to make it work with WooCommerce. There is a paid plugin, which is something you have to bear in mind. Uh, okay, so shipping zone. So what I do with this is I create. Um, different shipping uh, classes based off of weight. So the, the basic free version of WooCommerce doesn't come with weight-based shipping. It comes with per product-based shipping. If you want weight-based shipping, there's a, there's, a pre, there's a paid plugin called table rate shipping that you need to purchase through the WooCommerce website. So I'm gonna call this one six packs, add shipping method, cartons, and shipping method. Then you go uh, merch. I just charge one one fee for merch. 
Um, so how you kind of do this. So what I've always done with clients in the past with these kind of things, I go, so whatever the sh fulfillment shipping fulfillment company is, whether it's like Australia Post, FedEx, Sendle, you basically go, you find out the weights per product and you kind of roughly estimate um, because you can bundle products together. Um, they'll let you bundle products together, how much it would cost per cart per additional carton to sell based off of weight. And you, add, you factor that into here. So I'm just going to call this Brisbane because I want to offer a free local pickup. Um, Queensland. 4,000 dot, dot, dot. 4179. So this is the postcode range of Brisbane. So what I'm telling WooCommerce here is that anytime someone puts a postcode in, uh, this postcode in, they're going to be offered this shipping rate. So I'm going to add a flat rate. And I'm going to also add local pickup. The problem you're going to find with breweries is the sheer weight of the product. Um, it, that really jacks up the price of shipping. So most of my clients who've sold beer in the past, what they'll do is they will discount shipping, eat some of the cost of shipping into their products. Um, so it's six packs. I'm going to charge. Uh, I haven't really thought about this. Uh, say $9 plus, I'll say $9 plus $5 a packet thing you nine dollars plus oh wait sorry four sorry four plus brackets five times square bracket q t y close bracket close so that's nine dollars plus five dollars for each additional six pack so i'm going to charge uh fifteen dollars plus five dollars so i need to be ten just because the sheer weight of it but of course you know if you can eat the cost as much as the shipping cost you can eat into your Profit margins, the better. Um, merch, I'm going to charge $5 plus three. So three, two. And then got free shipping. All right. So done that. Oh, no, I don't want free shipping. So I want local pickup. Sorry. Um, yeah. So what I, what I would recommend in terms of how to think about eating the cost of shipping into your product is... So say something like uh, Dan Murphy's Connect. So Dan Murphy's Connect, I think, takes like a 20% cut from memory. Um, I think it's about 20%. So Dan, Mur so Dan Murphy's takes like a 20% cut, uh, which is an Australian-based liquor company that sells online. It takes like a 20% cut. Like looking at what um, other stores take as a percentage and using that as a buffer. So as long as you can have your shipping, the, the cost of your shipping eats less than 20% of the total product, you're making more money than if you'd gone through another online store retailer. And I would recommend going through your own store as much as possible because they can add it to your email list. They then get added to your Facebook retargeting pixel. And then you can then increase the lifetime value of every customer who comes through your store. All right. Add shipping. So we've got Brisbane. I'm really slow at this today. Australia. Oh. Australia. Okay, so we're just going to do flat rate shipping. So because what I did before was I made a Brisbane one and an Australia one, largely because there's different shipping costs because it's cheaper to ship within your own country, in your own city, but also that I don't want to um, – I want to offer local pickup to people in Brisbane. So I don't want someone in Melbourne buying a carton of beer and then choosing local pick, free local pickup, but then you, they can't pick it up because they're 15 hours away. Uh, six packs. I'm going to charge fifteen dollars plus five. So I'm going to charge a similar amount, ten plus because the shipping five times square bracket QTY close square bracket close bracket cartons. Let's go twenty dollars plus five merch. So I can drop this down to. Three and two, that's five dollars plus three dollars each additional product. So that's basically set up the shipping rules. Uh, all right, so now we've done that. What I'm gonna do, so basically, all the plugins are gone, all my images are uploaded. Perfect. All right, let's copy my copy text. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two types of products. So product categories. So now we're going to set up our product category. So basically, we've set up our store, we've set up our WooCommerce, uh, WooCom we've set up WordPress, we've set up WooCommerce, we've configured our shipping. So now it's time to set up our product categories. So I'm going to do six packs and then add a merch. So I like to, whenever possible, mimic what works. So looking for inspiration on in the online world as well as the offline world. So you see a lot of bottle stores, they'll have their six pack sections and a carton section. And they're not necessarily always together. And I don't think that's necessarily an issue because when people are looking for six packs, they look for six packs. They're looking for cartons, they're looking for cartons. So I like to segregate these. You can make it so it's like a variable product, but then it can make the pricing look a bit messy. Um, and it, it can be a bit confusing. Cartons cartons boop and then merch so these are basically just images of beer with a filter with text over the top um add image how are we doing 15 minutes i'm a bit slower today so six packs cartons and merch so we're just reordering this is this is how it will be displayed on the actual home page of the theme. All right, so now we've created our products. Now it's time to start adding the product categories. Now it's start time to start adding products into our store. Alrighty, so what I'm gonna do, come on, just takes a little bit to load. All right. So I'm kinda gonna go two at a time-ish. So I've got my Amber Ale, Amber Ale six pack. I'm gonna make this a featured product. Add our super convincing sales copy that convinces everybody to purchase when they visited. So it's a six pack and charge 30 bucks for this inventory. This is the way you're gonna find it the trickiest for breweries because how you manage your inventory between six packs and cartons. So what I would do is allocate a certain amount of six packs and allocate a certain amount of cartons and just kind of monitor your inventory. It depends on how much you sell. Say I have 50. Uh, low stock, stock threshold. So basically this is gonna send you an email once you hit a certain level of stock. So let's say you sell, um, you know, you need to have a certain buffer just to let you know when you hit a low amount. So I'm gonna say 10. So when I hit 10, it's gonna send me an email saying you've got 10 left. Uh, shipping class. So I'm going to go six packs. So these are the shipping classes we created in the WooCommerce shipping. So this is basically telling WooCommerce anytime someone puts a six pack in the shopping cart and then puts a certain location in the checkout, give them this rule. So kind of like a Venn diagram. Alrighty. So we are good. Six packs into the categories. Publish. All right. So now I'm going to create my Amber Ale carton. Amber Ale carton. Amarel products, but of course, as I said before, make sure that you've um, checked the legal requirements for your state. Um, you don't want to be um, your city, your, your country, your city, your state. Make sure that you've met all the legal requirements before committing to selling online. Perfect cartons. Alrighty, publish. All right, so we've got the Amarels done. And if you'd like me to build an online store just like the one I'm doing right now for free, head to okryan.blog slash go for more information. You basically get everything you need to run a successful online store for one set price. So you're not paying a whole, whole bunch of different vendors and then confused about where to go. Uh, double IPA. IIPA um, six pack. Double IPA, double IPA, six packs. I hope I get all through all the beers. I've because I kind of took a little bit longer, uh, not on purpose. Like I just tried to make sure I got um, actually uh, six packs. Uh, just because I wanted to basically take as much time showing you the setup, um, and then I'll just probably whisk through some of these. So I won't do like inventory for all of these ones now because I just made sure I did a little bit, I allocated a little more time to the first couple, show you in depth how to do it. And now I'm just going to rush through the last few. Um, 
Yeah, just because I don't want to spend too much time configuring all the shipping rules because I only have 12 minutes to finish off my online store. Say 100 bucks. No, nope, not a thousand. Shipping, cartons, IPA. And then you can also have yeah, different product images. So you could create, like, take photos of the carton. I'd take nice photos as well. Um, these are just ones I just knocked up just so they looked kind of cartony. Just adding new products. So I'll, I don't normally like load up a bunch of pages at once. Um, I typically just go do it as I go when I'm doing client work. But because I only have 30 minutes, page loading speed is a bit of an actual factor for this because it help, can knock off time. So I like to start loading up pages prematurely. Okay. Um, Imperial Stout. Imperial. Imperial Stout, oh, come on, six pack, super convincing sales copy, six pack, 25, super convincing sales copy, shipping, six packs. So that's the main thing. So because I haven't configured the shipping, all it will say is in stock, but it won't give a number. So you'll if you if you run out of stock, you'll have to go back in and say out of stock. Um, lager. 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 Six pack. Six pack. Six pack. I don't know. Twenty. Inventory. Six pack. Oh, I haven't done the carton of either. All right. Imper. Imperial Stout Carton, super convincing sales copy, Carton, super convincing sales copy. Um, I, I fully understand that this is probably the driest part of the episodes. I try and make it as interesting as possible, but um, this is just the, the bit where you just mass uploading a bunch of products and it can be a bit dry, but it's also unfortunately a little bit necessary. Um, did I do the lager carton? Is that lager carton? No. Lager carton. Um, okay, carton, carton, say 65 for whatever reason. These are a bit arbitrary. Of course, you just replace this with your own prices. This is meant to be an example of what to do. Um... Uh, cartons and then publish. All right, I'm just going to add in. I don't think I think I've missed out on a pale ale. Um, I'm just going. I might come back to that later if I have time. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to upload a, some um, yeah, publish. I'm just going to upload. Oh, come on, sorry. Um, I'm just going to upload some merch. What merch do I have? I have a hat. Come on, beer by Ryan. Hat. Sales copy, sales copy. Um, regular price, 20 Shipping, merch, merch, publish. All right, what have I got now as well? I think I've got a shirt. I'll just do a shirt. Oh, I don't have time for the shirt. I'll do it real quick. Edit, featured product. All right. Beer by Ryan shirt. Boop, boop. Okay, this is going to be a variable product. So we've got to change. So what we want to do is basically create like different sizes. So you can choose the size. So we've got to change it to a variable product. We're going to go shipping merch attributes. So we've got to create the size attributes. So attribute is going to be called size. So this is what will be displayed on the site size, small, line, medium, line, large, save attributes. Now we have to create variations 
uh, basically characteristics for those attributes. So you've created the attributes, variations. Uh, create, all right. I know I have missed a few products, but I'm running a little bit low on time now. All right, price, say 40 bucks. Um, so you basically have to go through and create a price for everything. That's the only frustrating bit. Medium, large, 40. Okay, save changes. And you can create um, st uh, stock levels for each product as well. You're not just restricted to um, just one of it. All right, let's get a page loading. Pages add new. So that's going to start loading that page. All right, so we have a bunch of products. Is it stored? I'm just going to have to take a quick look. Okay, so we've got bunch of images i'm just okay i'll do that in a sec basically because it's cropped i need to uncrop all of those all right so we've set up wordpress set up woocommerce set up shipping set up product categories set up products and now we need to add a page so the page the page we're going to add is called the home page so we're going to well, we don't want to call it home page because home page on storefront i actually use the page's name on the actual page itself so we need to call it something like beer by Ryan. So this will be displayed. Now we need to add our text. So grab our um, sample pack of our core range. So this is going to link to our sales funnel. So remember that click funnel sales funnel we talked about earlier, where basically like have a sample pack and then they've got a series of upsells that guide them through a bunch of different upsells. We basically need a link to that. So whatever your landing page, your sales funnel is, so okay, ryan.blog slash go. So that's going to be linking to our sales funnel sample. So that would be if you have a limited release, you can change it to that as well. Sample pack. Publish. All righty. So far, so good. All right. So if we go to our homepage now, Oh, four minutes, geez. Ooh. So you've got a homepage now. It doesn't look anything like really a store just yet. That's because we haven't customized, we haven't put it all together. We haven't told WooCommerce that our homepage is the homepage. So basically the first thing we need to do is tell, uh, so tell WordPress that the home, the page we just created, that is actually our homepage because by default it won't know what the homepage is meant to be. So homepage settings, static page, homepage is the B by Ryan. So we're telling WordPress, this is the page you want to be our homepage. I know what I didn't do with my page. Publish document. So I just need to add a featured image. So the image, so we need a nice big banner image. So that's my banner image. And I need to sign to the page attribute of a homepage. So this is basically, if you go from default template to homepage template, uh, what it'll do is just uh, basically create a bunch of different widgets underneath. So if I refresh this, come on, three and a half minutes, put the whole thing together. All right, so we have a store that looks like, starting to look like a store. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, site identity, I've got a logo. So I've created like a white text uh, logo on a transparent background. So we're basically uploading our logo to the logo spot. Select logo. So it's a white one because I'm going to change the banner to a nice dark, bluey, purpley thing. Header, background color. Text colors to white. White. I need to be a bit darker than that. more gray in it. Come on. Look, I think this may have to do just for the time being. I haven't found the right color for it, really. Ah, oh, oh, that'll do. Perfect. All right. Background typography. Okay. Typography. You need to change the hero, the, um, hero header color and the hero text color to white. That's going to be those colors there. 
buttons. Background button. I want to change it to what does red look like? Hmm. About orange. Look, orange will have to do. Homepage control. Okay, so this is homepage control. You'll see homepage control if you uploaded that homepage control plugin. If not, it won't be there. So I'm going to go and basically untag everything that I don't want. I like to get a nice kind of clean um, homepage. So I'm going to just stick to categories and featured products. Um, oh, I need one more. WooCommerce, product images, uncrop. So this is going to uncrop everything. Got a minute, and I still got a bit to do. Come on, home page, home page. All right, um, menus, menu. Okay, primary. Oh, one. Come on, next. Add items. Home, my account. Oh no, take off my account. Shop. Product categories. So I'm just creating the menus. I'm just trying to focus right now, get this done in 30 seconds. Two pages, my account. Three handhelds. So third is this is gonna be the handheld menu. Come on, oh, my account, shop, perfect, publish, okay, come on, all right, I don't have time to do the widgets, done, okay, all done, all right, so we've built an online store designed to sell uh, beers for breweries within 30 minutes. So let's take a quick look. Let's get rid of some of these pages, shall we? Right, this is a featured product. Okay, I'm just gonna be really I'm just gonna be really sneaky really quick. So I forgot to make another featured product update. Ooh. Okay, that was a little bit late. All right, let's refresh this real quick. All right, perfect. So let's take a look around. So no, what I'd also like to do as well is sometimes if I don't have a blog, because I like to have a couple of products in the uh, in the primary menu is put the my account here and have these as like social media links. Or if you have a blog, you can put your my account or you can have home blog, my account shop and just have your social media links. I think this is a great spot for your social media links. Um, and you've got a nice little banner image. Um, so that's like a sample pack that would link to your sample pack that the customers can go and check out, see what uh, products they like. So if we scroll down a little bit, we've got our product category images. So it's just like a nice little uh, images. So these are basically just little, little images I've created. Um, and then just put text over the top of like a, like a filter. So you can got like six packs, cartons, merch. I've kind of gone with like a bit of a cursive um brand font but of course you just whatever your uh, your brand book or your your font that you use for most of your marketing material just go with that we also have this is going to be a we recommended tab um so th these are the ones that so i've signed these as featured products so these featured products you can choose four products they can be a featured products that are displayed on the actual home page itself and i got rid of every other shop widgets because i'd like to keep it nice and lean um and of course you would just I know these images may not look great. Um, these are just something I knocked up as an example, but of course you just replace with your own images um, that would look really nice uh, as we go. Uh, we can check out the store. You've got like different six packs, cartons, merch. So if you click at the shop, one thing I didn't have time to do today was fix up the widgets. So by default, all the widgets that you will see here are going to be... Um, uh, like blogging specific. So WordPress was originally built as a blogging platform. So all the widgets are going to be blogging specific widgets. So what you'd need to do is go into widgets, delete all the widgets, and then just add in some more store specific ones. 
Um, so that just makes sense a bit more. Um, let's go check out the shirt because the shirts with the variable product. So as we go here, you can scroll down, you can choose the size options. So small, medium, large. Um, so you can choose a different size. You got the sales copy here. Um, so related products will just be products in the same category. You can also do little upsells and cross sells, which are really cool. Um, nice little drop down that has what you're viewing. Different side products are different like products in the same category. Um, product images, six packs. Go check out some of the six packs. So whether we want to go the Imperial Stout. So here you've got like nice little sidebars that tell you different products within the same product category. So if you're looking for six packs, um, you can get scroll down. You've got product descriptions. You can go add to cart. So this is going to add it to the product of the cart. And then view cart. So this is going to check out the shopping cart. Perfect. One other thing I'd recommend as well, because Storefront comes with three basic templates. You've got default template. Uh, full width, and you've got homepage template. Um, for the shopping cart, for your store, I'd use the default template. For your shopping cart, and for your shopping cart, my account, and checkout, I use a full width. So what full width does is going to get rid of the sidebar here because when I want, when a customer is going through the checkout process and going through the shopping cart, I want them to be focused 100% on that that uh, that action. I don't want them to be distracted by things in the in the sidebar. I just want them to be going focused on paying. You know, that's what I, I want them to be 100% focused on that one action. So let's go and calculate the shipping, shall we? Australia, Queensland. All right, so if I put 4,000, which is the Brisbane um, Brisbane postcode, which we created a free shipping rule for, it's going to give us the option, oh, sorry, local pickup rule for, it's going to give us the option to for local pickup or flat rate shipping, which was $9 or then $5 for each additional six pack they add to the shopping cart. So we go nine, it goes, it's just going to keep adding uh, $5 for each additional product. But if we go and take the, uh, the shipping location to outside the Brisbane city limits to, I think it was 4179, so 4180. So this is a postcode outside the Brisbane city limits and go update. It goes to $15 and it takes away the local pickup option. So we just keep adding adding a quantity. I think it's fifteen dollars plus five dollars for each additional uh, six pack that gets added to the cart. So perfect. So we have done it. Might not be a fully complete version, which is why I always recommend checking out other episodes of Thirty Minute Websites because I try and cover something different in each episode to make it a little bit more unique. Um, so some every time you watch an episode, there's something a little bit more to learn, a little bit something a little bit different. It gives you might for different ideas of what to do for your online store and how to run it. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching today's episode. Um, if you would like me to build an online store for you, just like the one I built today, you also get free hosting, free um, Facebook pixel integration, go to okrun.blog slash go. If there's another product you'd like to see me build an entire online store around in 30 minutes, don't forget to comment it down below. And I look forward to seeing you next time.